Our government is representative, and that means we don't do it ourselves. So if you're going to understand the form of our government, which form is unique, you have to understand something that's in the Declaration of Independence as a precursor, and that thing is consent or consent of the governed. So then the argument would have to go like this, that there's such a thing as a human, that all the things that are like that are equal in some respect, that this equality sets them up to be governed rightly only by their consent, and that gives rise to the structures of the Constitution. So to connect all those things up is to retrace the steps of the American Revolution. We're going to talk about representative government. Why consent? What is consent and why? It's kind of more or less a social contract that both parties are agreeing to the terms and conditions. We, as the people being governed, are allowing those who are in power to look over and provide the necessary securities so we can, as they put, to pursue our happiness. So in the Declaration of Independence, what do they say about the social contract? It's referenced in the laws of nature and nature's God. Is it? Where? Well, the, the social contract assumes that there are laws of nature because you enter into the social contract and you're leaving the state of nature. It sounds a bit like John Locke, who talks about that a whole bunch. And so uh, we, have to, we have to be careful not to get to chasing our own tails. And so we might stick with just something direct and simple and understandable. Right, like, if we're equal, you wouldn't have the authority to do something to me unless I say so. Whereas the king answered the Declaration of Independence. Did you know that? Uh, he gave an address from the throne, and he gave an answer. Caused it, this answer, this address from the throne, he caused it to be distributed across the lines at the siege of Boston. And he basically said in there, I was born to be the king here, and you were born to be the subjects. And I am required to look after you and be good to you and take care of you and to do what's in your interest, what's good for you. But you are required to do what I say. And he thought that that would turn the whole thing around. And at the moment that he distributed this thing across the lines uh, to the Continental Army, uh, it was melting away because their, their enlistments were up. And they read that thing and they went, what? <laughs> Is that what he thinks? We're going to, we're staying. We're going to do this thing, right? The king's idea is that I was born with an obligation and you were born with an obligation. We both have to do our thing. And we're born that way. And the Declaration of Independence denies that. It says we're all born equal. Equal in that sense that I named, right? We're not dogs until the dogs start talking. So that's what they say. And if it's like that, then you get to be our king if we say so. Uh, there's a really great document that we're not reading in this course, but I encourage everyone to read it in our Constitution Reader. It's written by Thomas Jefferson, who, of course, was a very powerful writer, earth-shakingly powerful writer, wrote the Declaration of Independence. And it's called A Summary View of the Rights of British North America. And in there, he goes on and on and on, and he explains, you get to be the king if we say so. You have to do what we say. In the last paragraph, which I'll paraphrase, he says, uh, let those flatter who fear. It is not an American art. Your counselors are partisans, not drawn from us, right? So he's telling the king what for, you know? And it gives rise soon, you know, the flag with the snake that says, don't tread on me. We have a right. We are born the same as you. You get your carriage since you got it already. It's just that, that you don't get to tell us what to do from it. Consent is born in equality in that way, right? And, and just, you just have to remember that we Americans, we just breathe that from birth. We get that with mother's milk. You know, that's what we think. We think we're born equal. 
It's the reason why we think we can do whatever we want if we work hard enough. It's the reason I thought, you know, I grew up, my, my dad's a school teacher from Pocahontas, Arkansas, right? But I didn't know that that wasn't the grandest thing in the world to be. I knew we weren't rich, but I didn't think anybody was born better than I, nor I better than anybody else. Uh, Churchill liked, used to love to say about equality, he'd say, uh, it's the principle that everybody is as good as everybody else or a little better. Would <laughs> you like that? Churchill was very witty. So, so now if you're going to have consent, that's a very radical thing to think. The King of England didn't think that, right? The fact that he gave that address from the throne and had it distributed, he thought that would be persuasive, right? Later, they send uh, Ben Franklin, who was, let's call it, let's say, a very artful human being. <laughs> we all know what that means, right? <laughs> for example, he was the world's greatest spokesman for, for uh, pious middle-class morality. Anyway, they sent him to England to negotiate. He didn't get on well. They liked him better in Paris. He went there too. Uh, and he gets over there and he talks with the cabinet. And the cabinet says, we are the mother country and you are the children and you must do what we say. And he writes a letter back to the, to the Continental Congress and says, there's going to be a war. Because <laughs> <laughs> what they think is, and, and, and remember, what they think is what everybody thinks. It's what the King of France thinks, who later subsidized our revolution. It's what they all think. It's what the whole world has thought from time immemorial. And these guys don't think that. That's a remarkable development in human history. And what we're going to talk about now is the amazing things that that makes possible. This idea of consent. You see, if they can only do it to you, if you say so, then incredible things become possible in arranging the government.